Hi, this is Brother Richard. And today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 418. <clears throat> and our lesson today is titled Progression of Events. We want to focus on the progression, the coming progression of events that are going to bring with it radical changes. Scripture indicates the end of the current age, the end of the current age will be characterized by five great events which the saints must prepare for. This is not optional. In order to be able to navigate and stay in the Lord's will, the saint must comprehend these five events and be prepared for them. The first is the beginning of sorrows, which we are entering into. Matthew 24, verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Or what? Verse 7. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. All this is going to break out simultaneously on a global scale as a result of the Lord's pronouncing a judgment on the earth and its inhabitants. This is what we are entering into as we speak it should be the main focus because if we're not prepared for this we will wind up being <clears throat> overwhelmed by this event then the next great upheaval that will take place will be the gathering. Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 9 to 10. The beginning of sorrows leads ultimately to the gathering. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. The individual who is not prepared for this will not partake of it. They will not be part of this great gathering. Did you say, oh, the individual that's not prepared, okay. Yes. The next great event that will take place will be the rapture. First Thessalonians, fourth chapter, verse 16 to 17. For well, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The saint that's not prepared for this great event will not participate in it. None of these events will happen to the person that's in a state of ignorance. Mm -hmm. 
it will happen to the individual that it anticipates it and is, the, is prepared to experience it. Remaining vigilant. Yes. yes. The scripture consistently uses that term, <clears throat> vigilance, watch, be ready for this to take place. The next great event that will take place is the great tribulation. Matthew 24, verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. This will be the greatest event to ever take place as pertains to upheaval, as it pertains to total uh, egregious experience. Now, the saint that's not prepared to comprehend this reality will go through this reality. The saint that is prepared and understands it for what it is will not experience this reality. So again, it has to do with the individuals prepared, the individual that is not prepared. And we see preliminary to this, the direction for those on earth to avoid it. Matthew 24. Verse, starting in verse 16. Let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Warn to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation. In other words, the individual that sees this individual, that sees this experience, if he's on the earth, had better flee to the mountains. Otherwise, he's going to be caught up in this egregious upheaval. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture indicates the last, yes, the last experience will be the return of the Lord. Matthew 24, verse 30. Then, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall all, A-L-L, all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Again, those on earth, if you are on earth at this time, has better be prepared for this. Otherwise, the event is going to have a negative influence on the individual that's not ready for it. Let me just ask you this question. Sure. Describe for us how you would define a person who is preparing what you would call optimally. What is the behavior of that person as we go through each of these five events? Glad you asked. That's our next lesson. Uh, Praise the okay. series. <laughs> Scripture indicates those who have understanding in these things will comprise the group of the wise of this age. In other words, to be prepared, you have to have understanding that this is real, that this is approaching, 
And the Lord will give the individual wisdom to anticipate and understand their place in this particular situation. The individual that comprehends this, the individual that's prepared for this, will be part of a unique elite group called the wise. Turn to Daniel, 12th chapter, verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Understanding will be more precious than gold. Mm. Understanding is the ticket to embracing and enduring and overcoming and profiting by that particular experience that particular condition that's coming on the earth now we said that the individuals that have understanding in these things will comprise the group of the wise they will be the highest ordained group <coughs> in existence Daniel <coughs> 12 verse 3 They that be wise, have comprehension, understanding, shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. They that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever. It will be the wise that will be the movers and shakers of the coming age. The wise will be exalted above all else, all others, the wise will be the leadership. <clears throat> the wise will be God's imminent chosen group. <clears throat> now, Scripture teaches as each event transitions into the next one. This is a series of events. One leading to the next. As each event transitions into the next one, the wise saint will know where he fits in and what to do. Scripture indicates, at the beginning of sorrows, the saint is promised that he is found, if he is found worthy to escape, all the events of the judgment pronouncements, he will be engaged in feeding the Lord's sheep. So what are we saying here? We're saying the first event to come, which we talked about, the beginning of sorrows, which is the result of the coming judgment, the saint that understands this and is prepared for it will be used to engage in letting everybody else understand and lead everybody else through the egregious times of this particular event. Turn to Luke 21, verse 35 to 36. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell in the face of the earth. What is this to say? This is to say the person that is not prepared for it is going to be caught up in a snare, a trap, as a result of him being ignorant of what's taking place. He's going to be struggling to try to survive, to try to comprehend, to try to endure the things that are taking place on the earth. We just read it. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. 
the individual that's wise and comprehends what's taking place is going to escape. Understand what's being said here. This is a global event. Global. There's no place on earth that a person can escape what is taking place at the beginning of sorrows. You can't escape it. You can become unaffected by it, by being aware and being chosen to be exited away from any problem that is going to affect you. Jesus is saying you're going to be counted worthy to escape what everybody else on the face of the earth is enduring, is experiencing. Now, turn to Matthew 24, verse 45. What will you be doing if you escape? It's only one thing that will count for anything when this takes place. It's only one occupation that the Lord pinpoints here. Who then is a faithful and wise, is it word again, wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? When this upheaval takes place, the judgment is pronounced, the world is caught up in a snare, billions of people are becoming. Victims of the judgments that the Lord pronounces. The individual who is wise and sought coming and made provision so it's not affecting him, he's counted worthy to escape, is going to be used to teach, to disciple all those that God calls that are also worthy to escape. You're going to become a mover and a shaker in a new world order in which what is important isn't wealth, what is important isn't fame or fortune, what is important is the knowledge of God that you possess, that you can give to people that will enable them to enter into this new reality. The Bible emphasizes the condition of wisdom. The world today doesn't value wisdom. The world today values wealth, fame, fortune. You say, well, how do you know? If you take a look at the ruling elites that are ruling this place, they're not wise, they're dummies. How do we know? Because they're leading this place down the, 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 the path to destruction, thinking that they're going to benefit by it. The wise is going to be preserved, it's going to be used, and this is just the first, this is just the first event. People are going to think it's the end of the world. They're going to see the heavens shaking, they're going to see things taking place on earth they never imagined could take place. They're going to be in a situation where their world, their belief system has fallen to the ground. You, the wise, are going to be used to restore a new world order. Which leads us to the next principle. Scripture indicates the prototokos, the wise saint, who has faithfully responded to his calling, will then look forward to the Lord's return and his elevation to angelic teacher position. In other words, you're going to look forward to the next event. You've endured the beginning of sorrows. You have 
thrived. You have brought others into a position of stability. You have been used in a position of leadership. You understand the next great event that's going to take place is a great gathering. And you are going to be elevated to a position in which you are a great participation, participant, a mover and shaker when this next event takes place. Go back to Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 9 to 11. Note what it says. <clears throat> Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. The wise individual will understand that he's being prepared to assume a position in the heavens. The scripture says the gathering will affect all that is in Christ, both which is in heaven and which are on earth. The individual who has been a mover and shaker on earth is now going to be exalted to a position of mover and shaker in the heavens. Verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. An inheritance... Turn to 1 Peter, the first chapter. Verse 3 to 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead to an inheritance, to an inheritance, to an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, in that faith is not away reserved in heaven for you. Your destiny, if you accept this calling, is not on earth. It's an inheritance waiting for you in the heavens. It is a position waiting for you in the heavens. The first two events, the beginning of sorrows, the gathering, is a preparation for you to experience and then ascend to your inheritance. We qualify for the inheritance through the beginning of sorrows and at the gathering we gain our inheritance, our position, our calling. Only the wise are going to understand this and prepare for it. Now, your inheritance includes giving what you have received, your wisdom, to those that inhabit the earth and the heavens. I'm going to repeat that. Your destiny will include giving what you have received 
to those on earth, men and those in heaven, angels. Turn to 1 Corinthians 6 chapter. Verse 3. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? You're going to be teaching angels before you teach men once the gathering takes place because men are going to uh, basically be cut off from their relationship with the Lord and <clears throat> incorporated into small communities that be prepared for their entrance into the heavens. Turn to Daniel, 8th chapter. We're going to read verses 13 to 16. Then I heard one saint speaking to another saint <clears throat> and another saint said unto this certain saint which spake how long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to get both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. And he said unto me unto 2,300 days then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Now what we have here is Daniel in vision sees one saint teaching other saints in heaven. What is he teaching them? He's teaching them the countdown to the second coming. He's teaching them a progression of time so they can be prepared events are going to take place on the earth and in the heavens for this great event to take place. Now notice what it goes on to say. Verse 14, He sent unto me into 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning, then behold, there stood before me as an appearance of a man. And lo, I heard a man's voice between the banks of Uli, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So what we find here, Daniel is given understanding, well, he's given revelation he doesn't understand. He asks for understanding. The archangel Gabriel is dispatched to give him understanding. Who dispatches him? A saint. The saint tells Gabriel, go down and explain the vision to Daniel. Now what does that mean? That means in order for the angel, the archangel Gabriel, to give Daniel the understanding of the vision, somebody had to give it to the archangel. Who is that somebody? The saint. is giving it to everybody else. What does that mean? That means that there was a time when the saint made his appearance in the heavens and summoned the archangel and the other archangels and the angelic company and explained these things to them before they were given to Daniel. So should we understand that? Because you're referring to verse 13. The Protodicus in verse 13 is speaking to the entirety of the heavens. 
or a portion of the heavens? A large segment of okay. the heavens. How many times can we identify somewhere in the word that Apotodicus does exactly that? Uh, quite a few. Hmm. Um, Is the implication that various Protodicus or even the same Protodicus moves around the heavens giving various segments their understanding. Well, the inference is, we'll give you an example. Turn back to Daniel 12. Mm Starting in verse 8, Daniel is given a running account, revelation, which he does not understand. The angel understands it. Verse 8, Then I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, so he's talking to the angel that has given him all this revelation. I heard, but I understood. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? He said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Now how does the angel know what's going to happen? He's been told. He has been taught. He knows things Daniel doesn't know. Who taught him? Protocus. The Prototokos that made the gathering and his inheritance and his estate in the heavens and his position to teach the angels the events that are going to take place both in the heavens and on the earth in the future. The angels learned about them before the prophets did. The created angels learned about them yes. before the prophets did. Yes. You mean the prophets on earth, yes. Yes. Gabriel comes and gives Daniel the information. Daniel still doesn't understand because it wasn't for him. Now, turn to Daniel. Uh, the 10th chapter. Verse 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of upaz. His body also was like the beryl, and his face as the appearance of lightning. His eyes and his, his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like un, in color to polished brass. And the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone, alone saw the vision, and for the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, but my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, I retained no strength. Yet heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. This mighty angel approaches Daniel, and as he approaches Daniel, Daniel withers and collapses. Human frailty cannot stand in the presence of this type of glory. So he just drops to the ground. The angel comes over, stands over him and revives him. Verse 10, And behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day thou didst 
set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. In other words, he's telling Daniel he was sent to give Daniel the revelation that Daniel was praying for. Mm -hmm. Going to ask a question: Who sent him? The Pesachicus. Exactly. Exactly. And in that respect, the angels are going to be taught by the saints that endure the beginning of sorrows and the gathering. So should we understand that prophets after Daniel, which I guess we call them the minor prophets, are receiving similar revelation in the same way that Daniel is? Uh, not all. Okay. Some receive from the spirit visions and things. But when you get specifics, uh, angelic visitation, for mm -hmm. instance, that angel has been taught by a saint. Right. And uh, he's imparting information to a human dealing with the things that the human race is going to experience. But in that respect, what we're looking at is God giving us revelation of the place of the individual who is now approaching and qualifying for the position in which he can teach angels. Paul said we shall judge angels, not only teach them, you're going to direct them. You're going to have the understanding of all things. Turn to Revelation 20, uh, 22, verse 8. After John is shown everything in the book of Revelation. I, John, saw these things and heard them, and when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. He doesn't say, fell down to worship before God. He doesn't call the angel God, he calls him an angel. Turn to John, uh, Revelation, fourth chapter. Revelation four. Uh huh. What was that again, Brother Richard? Revelation, the fourth chapter. Verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Who's speaking here? The same. This voice is the angel of Revelation 22. Because John connects it. The voice says, I'm going to show you these things. John says, if it's over, this angel showed me these things. And I was so un, uh, taken uh, 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 unawares of the glory that I thought, you know, this must be God. I want to worship him. Jesus. So who is the angel? <clears throat> Revelation 1. Jesus' angel. Revelation 1, <clears throat> verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven candlesticks which are, thou sawest are the seven churches. Who are the angels of the seven churches? Protect the saints. Protochus, leaders that come out of 
Matthew 24, verse 45. Matthew 24. The beginning of sorrows. Thank the Lord. So you have this progression. You're qualifying for what God has called you to qualify. It starts off as being the wise and faithful servant. Faithfully feeding God's sheep. Yes, sir. Okay, so we see seven stars in his right hand. Yes. Are there only seven? No. Okay. And the number is what? Seven is a symbolic number. Yes, I know. Of uh, means completion. Yes. Just like 24, there's more than 24 elders. How many stars are there? Doesn't say. <laughs> but the inference is probably 100 million. I, I, well, hang on. 100 million tells us the Protodicus. Well, no. All right, all right, all right. They're all angels, you're right. <laughs> what we're finding here is the destiny of the calling of the sons of God. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, of the 100 million that we just now referred to, how many of them know this? A certain percentage at this point doesn't mean that uh, it's going to remain that way. No. 17. Okay. Yeah. Today. Yeah. 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 See, <laughs> I, look, I thought it was going to be all of them. It will eventually be all of them. But not, you know, but I just tried to pry a little bit out of you and then he giggled and got me the answer. So I... <laughs> because we have to understand that since there's hierarchy everywhere, those that he's talking about who don't yet know have to be taught by those who know. So you're going to teach them. So the next question is, what's the chance of one of us in this room being right here? Spoke of. 100%. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So what we find here, brothers and sisters, is this basically is the roadmap that spread out for us each one makes his decision if you choose to go this way then this is what you're going to be dealing with now what we find the last principle scripture teaches the saint who does not embrace his calling fully not embrace his calling fully will be unprepared to understand the events to come and will be part of those who miss the rapture. What we find here are these five events. The first three are going to be experienced on the earth. Those that make the rapture will experience the next great tribulation from the heavens and the coming of the Lord from heaven to earth, transiting with the Lord. <clears throat> Matthew 25, verses 6 to 8. We're going to take a look at the individual who has embraced his calling, but not fully. And at midnight, midnight, darkest hour before the dawn, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all these virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you, well, go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Now you have a situation here where why are they called foolish? It's not because they're sinning. It's not because they're not committed. They all have the same commitment. They are going sacrificially to meet the bridegroom. Why are they called foolish? It has to do with the oil. They take oil. They understand they need oil. Well, that's where the foolish part comes in. 
they do not make provision to supply themselves with all the oil that's available. And when they get ready to go out, the wise take oil in their lamps and they grab extra oil. The foolish take oil in their lamps and they walk off. What does that mean? That means you can have individuals who go through these, beginning of sorrows, gathering, but miss the rapture. Why? Because they're not prepared. Why? Because they didn't take the oil that they needed. They assumed there would be understanding of all that's going to take place. They understood the beginning of sorrows perfectly. Went through that. They understood the gathering perfectly. They were prepared for it. They endured it. They had a following. Went through that. They didn't understand the rapture. Mm -hmm. They became part of the group that's corrupted in the communities. Yes. Yes. They weren't ready or expecting because they thought they had enough. Well, we went through all this. We went through all that. Um, we um, we're going to um, make the rest of it. Make the rest of it. We're talking about the elder group here yeah. because the teachers are already gone up. Now you use the word corrupted because they didn't take extra oil. That's not necessarily the Jezebel group who are corrupted because of false teachings. These are corrupted because they didn't bother to continue studying. Yes, they, um, in the word corrupted, it's, but you, you, you experience when you deny full access to the Holy Spirit, you mm. are experiencing a degree of corruption. Okay. Failure. Obstinance, because the Holy Spirit is always going to quicken a person. You need this, you need this, you need this. I got enough, I got it, I, I go, I'm good. <laughs> no, you aren't. You think you are. Hmm. It's a corrupted view. That little pinpoint of darkness hmm. is entered in 99% light, but you got a zero, 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 one tenth to the nth degree of darkness. That's enough to keep you from making it. And in that respect, that's why they're called foolish, because they didn't have to. If they had just consistently done what they needed to do, they would have gone. But just a little, just a little smidgen of deviation, that's it. That's enough to call it, uh, make you lose your ability to be an overcomer. So what we find here is, <coughs> The events that are coming are going to be, we're all going to be tested. The first test is what's coming up. You're going to see egregious happenings take place all around you here in America. You read about J.J. Carroll talking about yes. how to dis, dis, disposing people mm -hmm. out of their apartments yep. in Chicago. They're living in tents and they're replacing them with these uh, illegal aliens all over the place. You're going to see egregious stuff happening. The banks, I guarantee you, are going to uh, turn on the people and take their savings and take everything else. The government is going to egregiously pass legislation to restrict the liberties of people. The uh, FEMA camps are going to be filled with protesters, you're going to see rebellion, you're going to see civil war, you're going to see states secede from the union, you're going to see crash and burn uh, scenarios all over the place. What do you do in the midst of all this? You keep your eyes focused on Jeremiah 2530. Understand the Lord is watching all of this and it is going to be addressed and in that situation, you keep yourself pure from being caught up with the things that are taking the place all around you because the desire to get involved is going to be overwhelming. The injustice that you see, the egregious things that are taking place 
are going to want to suck you in, uh, call to you to redress what's an objective wrong. The Holy Spirit will tell you differently. The Holy Spirit will tell you prepare for the beginning of sorrow so that you may be accounted worthy to escape all this stuff that's going to come to pass. That's our first test. We go <coughs> endure that test. The second will be the gathering. Each one is a test. Pass the test. We have glory waiting for us. Thank you, attention. <laughs>